Central Bank of Nigeria unveils rice pyramids in the Kebi State, saying Nigeria needs to boost food reserves. Open market operation Central Bank of Nigeria to face out $40 billion. Oil sleeps on concerns that OPEC may be set to pump up supply. Plus, Asia markets mix as private survey shows China's services sector activity grows slow. Details of this and more on Business Express on the network service of the NTA. And we are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Musa Abubakar. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says it will soon end the open market operation OMO bill sales to investors. CBN Director Monetary Policy Hassan Mahmoud, who said there are plans to phase out the instrument once current obligations have been redeemed, didn't give a time frame for the policy implementation. He added that the cost of liquidity management is getting too high and issuance of OMO bills should be a transaction between the central bank and commercial lenders. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has unveiled rise pyramids in Kebi State, saying with this effort, the country can achieve full security. The rise pyramids are a product of the APES Bank's Anko Borrowers Program launched to support rice production in the country. Musa Babalu reports. It is a rice festival showcasing the capacity of Nigeria to produce enough rice that can feed the entire country. The celebration is, however, coming at a time security challenges are shaking the bond and the unity of Nigerians. Speakers at the festival, including the Sultan of Sokoto, Chairman Governors Forum, and Senator Ken Inamani, we are of the view that agriculture should be a tool for unity rather than division. Some people whose members have been killed or whose vehicles have been damaged are protesting and seeking attention so that they can be supported by Nigerians. But there is no blockade of food anywhere in the 36 states of Nigeria. Because lack of food is lack of welfare for our people, it's lack of security, it's lack of everything because without food you can't do anything. But what these pyramids have shown us is that the greatest form of security is human security. And the best way to express human security is via food security. In the meantime, the Republic of Benin said it has banned the importation and the movement of rice marked for Nigerian markets through her ports. The President, Patrice Talon, in a message delivered by his Foreign Affairs Minister, said the country would rely on Nigeria for technical know-how on how to boost her local rice production. At the rice festival, this means that we won't allow anymore this parable rice that comes through Benin to Nigeria and has caused so many problems till the closure of border, which was a painful experience, both for Nigerians and from Beninois. Nigeria's rice output has increased beyond the demand of her citizens. The country is now ready to export the excess to her neighbors. 
Uh, similarly, the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Omefele, has warned against Nigeria repeating the mistakes of the past by neglecting agriculture. He said the country should immediately start to build its own food reserves as the experience from the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated lockdowns globally had demonstrated that countries only export out of their reserves. The call. Support of the growth recorded in this drive to attain self sufficiency in food production and to moderate prices of agricultural commodities. Mr. President has approved the resuscitation of Nigeria's commodity exchange and the CBN, in partnership with other stakeholders, will be committing at least 50 billion naira to this initiative. Well, recent information indicate that the Republic of Benin is taking a cue from Nigeria rice production strategy and looking to begin learning the ropes from Nigeria rice farmers. Now, to put this into context, is a former CBN Depart Director, Department of Finance and Special Advisor to Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria, Mohamed Alibaba, who joins us via telephone from Kebi State. You're welcome to Business Express. Mr. Ali Baba. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Ali Baba, how would you react to the position taken by uh, uh, Republic of Benin banning uh, boy rice passing through their country to Nigeria? Yeah, I, I think it's a very brilliant and welcome development. Highly welcome. Because, I mean, by and large, we, we, we've been complaining about smuggling of imported rice into this uh, country which has been sabotaging the efforts of the government and Nigeria has to be self-sufficient. And uh, because of the huge, large expanse of the borders that we have, and of course the porosity of the borders, it's not been easy for either the customs or the entire security uh, network to, to police the borders. So this is really an uh, economic uh, soccer punch, so to say, for, for both uh, countries especially for Nigeria and then, of course, the uh, Nepali relationship that we've had. Because every effort that has been made in the past has been largely, almost uh, largely uh, failed uh, efforts. But now, usually when you want to attack a problem, you attack it from the source. Once uh, the, the Republic, as they have assured us, because I was part of the delegation, I actually went to meet with the president uh, last week, and the leader of delegation at KB also reiterated that every item that is declared, not just rice, contraband in Nigeria will not be allowed into the New Republic. So and once there are no goods cleared from the New Republic port, then there will be nothing to smuggle in. So the issue of having porous borders and uh, limited uh, number of customs and security of produce will have been mitigated by that uh, single policy of uh, the New Republic. Okay. Okay, the, the Republic of Benin is looking forward to uh, Nigeria for technical know-how to improve their local rice production. Uh, how, are we ready for that? Yeah, definitely. In fact, uh, by on Tuesday, we, our meeting will continue. When, when we were with the president, afterwards we, we met with the officials about two or three times. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, you know, KB is one of the states they share border with. Malaville is just uh, nearby. We actually came by road from... Uh, Cotonou to to Kebi, you know, to attend this program. So we're, we're very much ready, and uh, they are very anxious about the takeoff of this uh, relationship because it will be win-win. Mm -hmm. In the first place, like the president reiterated, they are not even getting much from the import that has been damaging our relationship by uh, using the, their land, uh, I mean, their post as a conduit. Mm -hmm. Now, with this opportunity, they will be able to create jobs for their people. There will be wealth uh, generation too. And then, of course, an improved uh, relationship. Because, I mean, the assurance that Nigeria gave them was the fact that, I mean, they themselves know and we know this is the hugest market. If they uh, merely as a smuggling launch pad, we could be that uh, uh, sustaining their, their, their ports. Then, when they are producing it, it will even be much easier. So, we are very much ready. Like I said, even from Tuesday, we are expecting the delegation back for us to continue with the efforts. In, in a few months, we expect that we'll have hit the ground. We think it's starting from the neighbors, uh, neighbor, neighboring land uh, to Kebi. 
Okay, can you brief us on, uh, brief us on this new rice scenario between uh, Nigeria and the Republic of Benin? What was it like yeah. before now? No, uh, well, before now, uh, the relationship has been mostly informal. Of course, uh, given the, the historical background the, the, uh, across African countries, you know, the neighbor, the border communities almost still inter interact, but it's not been formal. Actually, like I said, since we are all similar, but actually everything produced at the border in, within Nigeria is what is produced across. So, but the relationship, like I said, has been largely uh, informal and mostly, we say, maybe illegal. Now, with this new development, now it will be a formal and, uh, of course, in line with the ECOWAS and Africa Treaty and even the African Free Trade Agreement, that will be a smooth, uh, uh, you know, relationship. Because, I mean, the definition likely of, uh, you know, commodities or prod products that can come in are those that originate from the, the neighbors, I mean, the African members. So if the rice, water, party or process, you know, comes from, uh, I mean, from the Republic, they will meet all those requirements. So the issue of illegality and even, uh, you know, stressing our security will not, will not arise. And it will be win-win because, like we said, if we could be feeding and sustaining the economy of Thailand and the other far east, then it will be easier for us to be the ones, you know, helping our brothers to to, to improve their, their economy and create jobs. And of course, that also, play, you know, dovetails into security because by the time all the border communities are busy, that limits restiveness. That also provides that there is always, uh, you know activities around those uh, locations which will be an anathema to to crimin criminality so it's so so far reaching that it's uh, truly a very historic and welcome uh, development now wh what is the quantity and value of rice that lands in Beni destined for nigeria well uh, for now i don't have the official estimate but it's truly huge because i mean we the rice farmers and even those that grow that value chain have been, you know, you know, feeling the pinch. Because before you know it, especially given, apart from the policies that uh, operate in those originating countries where they subsidize exports, a lot of what is uh, shipped here are almost given out uh, at less than equivalent uh, prices here, almost that they give away, because most of them are long of a state and even chemicalized. So you will realize that against all odds, despite all the efforts to, to constrain them, the business, uh, the smugglers actually, all, you know, bend over double to ensure that they, they, they get them in because it's far, far more profitable. Now, without that, it means our, our own efforts here will be optimal because even the fear of smuggling usually discourages people from going into into rice farming or agro processing without that now that would be an encouragement for those uh, that are sitting on on the borderline and of course those that are already there will equally add to what they are already doing because the market now is assured if there is no uh, uh, you know the uh, injurious competition from uh, you know yonder Okay, so uh, beside we, we understand that uh, the one uh, Benny wants to go into local production. What what role did the border closure and the AFCFTA play in this? Well, of course, they played a lot of uh, role. The border closure actually because it uh, impacted negatively on the economy, on the uh, neighboring economies. We all know how much uh, they have pleaded, how much effort was made. Even though we also were impacted, but they are washed off. So actually, the border closure actually, you know, you know, uh, highlighted the extreme displeasure which Nigeria, you know, has against this uh, economic sabotage that uh, these neighboring countries have decided to become, you know, quite, you know, source of. So it uh, contributed a lot, and then it's part of the present mending efforts by the Republic in particular and other neighbors to ensure that, uh, I mean, if they call us their big brother, they should not be a source of injury to their brother. Because we're supposed to, Africans are expected uh, to be their brother's keepers, you know, generally, we're our brother's keepers. Okay, so and then what role did Nigeria play in actualizing uh, this for Bini Republic, or Bini Republic, yeah. rather? Part of it, uh, largely, is uh, technical assistance, and then, of course, partnership. Because since it's, a, it's a new field, it's a new 
business opportunity, they will actually be relying on some of our business people. First, our own expertise as uh, Rifan and having almost perfected this uh, anchor borough program and support for agriculture will come in handy. So technical and advisory support will be provided. But most importantly, too, our business people, that is also another opportunity for economic diversion, uh, diversification, because once you invest there, what you bring in will be exports. And so that will improve our balance of payment because earnings will be made in and foreign exchange, because since we are not yet uh, using the echo as the same currency. So truly, like I said, on two fronts, advisory, technical and advisory services, and then partnership and investment. Those are the opportunities. In fact, already, I think some of our businessmen have made uh, such, uh, have started those efforts. Because I recall that when the president of uh, Benin was here, he met with some of our top business people, and they discussed some of these opportunities. So the, the, the spin-off is huge, it's huge, both in terms of uh, transfer of knowledge and then uh, investment opportunities for Nigeria and, uh, and, uh, you know, and us too. Okay, are they producing for Nigeria? Uh, Nigeria is the biggest market in Africa. Okay. They'll produce for themselves, of course, the, the type that they eat. You know, wh wh what was even funny was the fact that they hardly eat the purple rice that they allow into our country, so they never needed... To, to, to import them. The purple rice, any purple rice that lands in the Republic is meant for the Nigerian market, but it's shifting illegally because uh, what uh, these uh, smugglers pay is usually just the transit fees. They don't pay the actual duty and levies, and that's why they were avoiding our ports. Not necessarily because of the gridlock, but because it's, I mean, the cost is huge, it's prohibitive. You have to have your own uh, source of foreign exchange, and then when you come, you pay the duty and then you pay levies. And that's what they were avoiding. So, I mean, uh, the, the impact is uh, monumental, actually. Okay. Well, what's the implication of rice production in the Republic of Beni to the ECOWAS region and Africa in general? Yeah, the implication is that uh, because virtually just like uh, it's uh, damaging, uh, you know, far east uh, imports are damaging our economies and undermining the development of our agriculture. That's what is happening all over. So once and uh, Benin port plays a strategic role, you know, uh, access point for most of the landlocked uh, African countries. So once they stop, you know, since now anything we declare contraband is what they do we declare. Once they stop allowing those imports, that will encourage even other African countries to also look inward and start a developing and improvement on their agriculture and then creating jobs and generating wealth across the country. So the, the ramification, like I said, the spin-off is huge, is monumental and mostly positive. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Muhammad Alibaba with uh, Rice you. Farmers Association. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Now, oil prices were down in, in trade on Wednesday, extending several days of losses amid uncertainty over how much supply producing countries will push to restore to the market at a meeting this week while the coronavirus pandemic persists. U.S. West, West Texas Intermediate crude futures fell 18 cents to $59.57 a barrel, down 6 cents since February 25th when they hit their highest close since May 2019. Brent crude futures dipped seven cents sixty two dollars sixty three cents a barrel down seven percent from a 13 month high heat last week. The organization of the petroleum exporting countries OPEC and Allies, known as OPEC Plus, are set to meet on Thursday at a time when they are generally positive on the oil market outlook compared with a year ago when they slashed supply to boost prices. Nago aged down on Wednesday as firm U.S. Treasury yields continue to pressure on the non-yielding bullion, although prices held above eight and a half months true heat the previous session.
that the ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development has signed a 40 million euros framework agreement with Odo BHF, a Franco German financial services group, president of EB. ID, Dr. George Donko and Florian Wheat, heads of international corporate banking at uh, ODDO BHF, sailed the new partnership which is designed for project-related transactions throughout the ECOWAS region. It includes supplies from Europe officially supported by export credit agencies like Atradios of the Netherlands, uh, BPI France Assurance Exports of France, or Eula Hamas of Germany. The cooperation between EBID and ODDO BHF AG is said to be an important contribution to promoting the development of various industrial sectors in the ECOWAS region. It aims to further strengthen the prospect for small and medium scale enterprises and industries to enable them to contribute to the growing economy and generate employment. Now, issue markets mix as private survey shows China's services sector activity growth slowed down. And their call call reports. Stocks were mixed Wednesday. South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40, Namibia's overall index, and Tunisia's Tunidex all traded in positive territory, while Nairobi Old Share and Ghana GSE Composite were the relative underperformers, dipping 0.17% and 0.32%. Stocks in Asia Pacific were high on Wednesday, with Hong Kong's Hansen Index leading gains among the region's major markets, jumping 2.7% to close at 29,880.42 basis points, while the Shanghai Composite gained 1.95%. The Nikkei 225 also closed 0.51% higher at 29,559.10. Away from Asia, European stocks advanced with investors in the UK keen to see what taxation and spending plans the British government reveals in the annual budget statement. The DAX climbed 0.96%, CAC 40 of France 0.92%, while London FTSE added 1.22%. In the U.S., the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 143.99 points. The S&P 500 slipped 0.81%, while the Nasdaq Composite dropped 1.69%. Neka Uku, Business Express. Well, the Nigerian Stock Exchange added today's trading on a negative. Uh, it the All Share Index declined 0.4%. 44% to end 39,522.06 basis points. Uh, 244.3 million shares valued at 4.1 billion exchange hands in uh, 4,714 deals. Uh, market capitalization stands at uh, 20.6 trillion naira. Well, the most active shares are Zenit Bank uh, Guarantee uh, Trust, then UCAP. Well, this is where we end this episode of the program. Don't forget you can access this and all previous episodes on YouTube, and you can also communicate with us on Twitter, and the handle is NTA News Now. The hashtag is BizExp. We value your feedback. Do join us again on Thursday at 9.30 a.m. for another package. I am Musa Abubakar saying, well, Staying safe, keep thinking, and doing business.